this is a much waited uh, update from Vengeance, I guess. Um, let me just mess around. I'm slightly aware of what's new, but honestly, kind of not. But what I am aware of right off the bat is that there's this thing called Quantize. Let's do a classic arc little. Yeah, all right, so let's start there. Now, I believe, uh, turn this thing on. I know that if I have it on fixed, it's kind of like what I want, so minor pentatonic. Yeah, so even though I'm pressing a D, it's actually playing a D sharp right now. So it's just kind of like goes to the nearest note. There's this quantized part here, which is basically keeping everything within a certain framework. So right now I selected minor pentatonic. If I change that to like major pentatonic, now I go back to minor. So this thing is kind of irrelevant, t technically, like, it's not irrelevant, but it's like, if I turn this off, I think we'll hear actually what this pattern sounds like. It's like completely random, but the quantize mode turns it into musical goodness. So the idea here basically is that down here, you can like with this uh, ran ARP randomizer, you can just generate random patterns and then with the quantize function you can quantize that randomness to cohesive melodic ideas or whatever you're trying to go for that's pretty fresh and i think over here like if i press this auto dice button every time it loops around it makes a new roll of the dice basically without having to press it so it's like completely random every single time it loops around But I mean, obviously, it's still within the framework of whatever you selected up here for the quantize function. Uh, so that's pretty sick. I mean, let me see. I don't know if I use the auto dice, honestly, that often, but it could be useful for some stuff. Oh, you can also select what it will randomize over here and what it won't. Oh, so over here, you can also change this to... Let's go also to minor pentatonic. Now I think this pattern is actually in minor pentatonic. Let's see. Yeah, so every time I hit roll now, it's gonna randomize everything, but it's now gonna keep this framework over here. All right, what else is new? There's a new quantum effects thing. What is that? It's like a delay or something. Let me turn this ARP off. sort of delay thing. I have no idea how this thing works, but it's cool. What else is there? Root a verb. So it's obviously a verb. Oh, it kind of sounds like a shimmer from Valhalla. A lot of these presets actually have the word shimmer in it. So clearly it's like a Valhalla shimmer type of not super interesting to me. Bit bite thing bit distortion what are these ah. oh that's cool it's kind of crazy let's like see some of these presets That's interesting. What else is there? Looks like all these are the same. One thing that I know is pretty cool is spectral thing. So it's like their new mode of like granular synthesis. So let's see if I open up that. And I should be able to drop in like samples. So let's see here. So here's like a vocal sample. So this is the original. It sounds like this. <laughs> But so then you could do stuff like just turn it flat.
So now I have like a one shot kind of. Make it into an arp. Um, let's get us something that's not a harmony. Let's do this quantize thing. Let's turn this into like mysterious. And then let's randomize this. Uh, let's try minor pentatonic. Let's try some sort of line here. So now I can just take, go back to the editor, and move the point around. It's pretty cool. You can like automate this, so I can turn this. Like, let's put a little LFO on there. Modulate it a little less. So I can also mess with the spectral expander. like pure white noise now. But let's try again another sample like I don't even know what I'm dragging in. Pretty cool. Um, let's try some of these quantum effects on it. I don't know, that's pretty cool. A little loop. Let's see what I can come up with there. For some reason, my factory content 2 isn't showing up. As you can see, it's just got factory content and then factory content again. Um, so I have to look that up for some reason. So I can't actually preview some of these new patches, which is a bummer. Let me see if I can make like a base out of this new spectral thing, like maybe with a vocal. Let me grab like... Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Let me try making one out of this. Let me initialize this, actually. Let's see if this is possible. Pull this down. Let's layer that with, like, a sine wave. Oh, I gotta tune it. Let's see. Uh, there we go. And then let's change this to uh, maybe a...
send this top oscillator to its own FX slot out FX one. I'm gonna make another one for the sub. This vocal is gonna actually, I'm gonna put an EQ here, high pass. Just adding some texture to this bass basically. Let's have a separate filter actually for the saw. kind of cool let's see am i still recording all right so one thing i really like about this so far is these little red circles or whatever you have here they're actually really handy because you can just like drag them over and like assign them to stuff i just made this base patch right and i just wanted to make it so that it has like more like a punchy sort of version of it so now i have this macro map to the cutoff so you can have a total of 12 macros now. Technically, well, also these macro buttons, so. But that's super handy. You used to only have three, so that's nice. It's just really easy now to navigate. You don't have to do use this mod matrix. It's kind of like any other synth now. You can just drag and drop these to wherever you want them to go. Now, you know, one thing that I wish you could do is just get rid of this entirely. Like, is there a way? Like, I don't need this left side of this view at all, honestly. Most of the time when you're working, you just kind of want to see the stuff that you're working with. Like, I wish there was a way to do that. Maybe there is, and I just don't know. To me, the main things here are the spectral stuff, some of these new uh, effects, which is whatever, the ARP, the quantize function, that's cool. Uh, but also, like, honestly, now with Ableton 12 coming out, the arpeggiation mode generation stuff and, like, the sort of arps that you can do with the MIDI, like, it's, it's kind of making me think that uh, some of this stuff is kind of uh, a moot point. Like, I'm probably not going to be using this stuff, honestly, that much. There's this thing in here, it's like the ratchet thing, which is kind of cool but honestly like i think the ableton midi generators are going to be able to do so much more stuff than what this is capable of doing that honestly i don't think like even though this is cool i don't think i want to be using this functionality that much which is kind of a bummer because it seems like that was one of the big selling points for avenger 2 or at least that was like in a lot of the demos that was made to be like the cool thing and it's cool and i can show you a little bit here like let's see select this uh, and go to ratchet So you can see what it's doing. Uh, you, there's all these different ones. Pretty cool, but like honestly, I don't know if I'm what I'm gonna use that for. Like, like again, I don't know if I'm gonna actually use this. Like, cause I'm gonna be doing all this stuff in Ableton. Like, I'm not gonna be using it for this. But so let's get like a hi hat. So technically, like I can have this generating like these random ratchet quote unquote um, loops forever. So. Let me put down like some sort of trap beat here, whatever. All right, so here you go. Um, you got this like randomized kind of hat pattern happening here. Every time it rolls around, it auto rolls a new random sequence and it creates these different patterns of trap hi-hats or whatever. And you can mess with it while it's going. So if I just want short ones the whole time, I can just go like this. If I want to add some longer ones in there. some gaps and stuff. 
I mean, I, I, I guess that's kind of interesting. Since it's a synth, you can kind of just mess with all kinds of stuff with it, right? Like, let's turn this trap hat into like a spectral thing. Let's try spectral trap hats. I don't know. I'm actually using open hat because we can kind of make that crazier. Yeah, and now I can actually modulate the position of the the granular thing here. So let's go. Let's take this LFO and map it to the position of this spectral wave here. Let's go like that, I think. And let's do. Let's see here. Um, make this bigger. LFO just working on the DK, I guess. See here, I'm gonna put it to randomly. Well, that's a fun little hat hack, hi hat hack hi had our pack that you could do with this. I don't know how much I'll, like I said, I'll, how much I'll be using that, to be honest, once I get into the Ableton 12 stuff. It's still kind of a fun feature, I guess. I guess the last thing that I'll try is just making like a patch with this, just to see what I can come up with. My, my initial instinct on what I want to do with this stuff right now is kind of combine the spectral granular stuff with like normal synthesis. So, I'm gonna try to make a patch, maybe like a bass sound that has like a top layer that's from a sample that's getting manipulated by the spectral engine or whatever. And then that has like a nice solid fundamental for my natural synth. So let me just see what I can kind of come up with. Um, I'm gonna try to just start with putting in like some sort of sample. All right, so init patch. And I'm gonna make a new oscillator and I'm gonna make that into a spectral thing. And then I'm gonna drag in a vocal. Uh. Let's try this. This is an F. Uh. If I hold down, if you hold on shift, you can move the starting point, but that's not the actual starting point of the sample itself. Uh. So you can just click here and it'll change the starting point. Uh. 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 Let's start there. I don't want velocity on my volume. Velocity on my volume. I don't want my velocity to affect the cutoff. I just want this like, boom. Oh, here we go. Let me, I forgot about this. So let me pull down. How do I make it one shot? Compress that a bit. Make it a little bit more wide. Let's make the oscillator go into a different filter. Square. Well, I was getting somewhere. These are both going through the compressor right now. I'm gonna make two different things for them actually. Let's make oscillator one actually come out of FX1 and then oscillator two come out of FX2 just for, to be make it simple. But now I wanna put an EQ over the vocal. Again, I don't wanna have the lows coming through there as much. Now we can affect them separately. Maybe we'll put a verb on before that. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Filters one and two into filter three now is the question. Because this is something I don't think you could have done before, but... See, I don't know how this works yet, but there's this whole parallel mode thing. So filter one send and then filter one return. I think I can add, like, more filters. Like, filter three, I could put... Oh, what is that? See, I don't even know what I just did. Filter one is going into filter three or something. I mean, it sounds better. <laughs> I don't know what I did. I have to look at the manual probably on this one. Maybe a little bit of verb on the whole thing. Trash verb? I forget. Oh, 
wish there was a way to do ARPs globally still. Because right now you have to still select them on in each individual oscillator. But there's not like a global ARP thing. So if you have like a bunch of these oscillators open, you have to click on ARP on all of them for them to ARP. Let me save this patch. I just called it Mamba. See, if I just click ARP here, it'll only ARP the oscillator one. There's no like global ARP. Oh, it's the same thing with the quantize, huh? There's probably a way to copy some of these settings at least. So they. So now if I want it on here, I have to do. I have to copy it. Now if I want to try different ones, I have to change them here every time. That's kind of annoying. Like even just changing that. If somebody knows how to do that, let me know. Like I want to be able to just change this quantizing for all of the oscillators at once. If there's not a way to do that, it's kind of a bummer. wild <laughs> let me just for grins and giggles put it like a little drum loop under that and side chain it because that's funny and then i'll end it there let's go like <laughs> this is gonna be funny uh let's put a it's like a house beat uh this is gonna be ridiculous go crazy let's put an infiltrator on there because i don't know at the end of the day just to see if you can destroy it let's just <laughs> That's it. I'm done. That was weird. Alright, that was my first impressions off Avenger 2. Honestly, as an upgrade, I would give it a solid 5 stars out of 10. Uh, if you're coming into it fresh from zero, like you've never used it before, I, I would give it... Hmm. Maybe like eight stars? Significantly more. The main reasons for why I'm kind of like a little bummed on the update, the upgrade process was really bad. Like just straight up. And I know I'm not the only one because I went on their forum, which by the way, links to their Facebook page, which is oh, so gross. Ugh. Don't do that. Like don't use Facebook for your anything. Just don't. Like it's 2024, get with the times. Don't use the elephant graveyard of memes or whatever. <laughs> That's a huge, huge pain in the ass. It wasn't just for me. Also, like my buddy Vaughn, uh, he's in the other room. Same problem. Just insanely difficult. The V Manager, oh, so bad. Their website crashing all the time. Just a huge litany of things that were wrong. It probably took at least an hour for me to get this thing working, which is 
insane. Like, come on. Like, a good example of a company that doesn't do it bad is Kilo Hearts, for example. They're just 10 out of 10. Anyway, that was a bummer. Now, just thinking about the actual update itself, I mean, I still haven't been able to install fa the Factory 2 content for some reason, so pff, who knows what's going on with that. But my buddy did his works, and his opinion of it was that the amount of presets that you got was, like, okay. The keys section was, like, maybe a 10 presets. It's like, come on. <laughs> of course, there are probably, like, way more of these, like, you, you hit one note and it plays an entire track, like... That's a whole nother topic that I don't get what, what they're trying to do. Like, who's the target market for a synth where you, like, program an entire song inside the synth? Like, that's not what I want out of a synth. I just don't. Like, I don't I don't know how who is the target market for that. Like, they're like those, what are they called back in the day? Like, the Optigons? Kind of like the player pianos of back in the day. Avenger kind of feels like it's one of those accompaniment organs, you know, like at churches and stuff. But it's for like the church of EDM or something. Like, I don't know. Then the actual like upgrades themselves, like the spectral thing is, it's cool. It's cool. But I was waiting. I was expecting way more out of it. Like face plant, for example, already has a really cool built in granular thing. Um, I mean, even Omnisphere has a granular thing in it. There's a ton of really cool granular plugins out there. So expecting something more, I just didn't really get it there. The, the ARP quantization function, again, while cool, is kind of whatever to me, honestly. There's a lot of cool things that you could do with it, but I feel like technology is like already catching up on other things like DAWs are doing that kind of stuff like immaculately well nowadays like if you're in a DAW like Bitwick or Ableton you got that part covered I'm not gonna need that I, even though it's cool I didn't even show you the capabilities of importing loops and like drum loops and stuff because it's again like that's not what I want out of a synth like I don't want to compose entire songs in my synth like a synth or like uh, whatever you call these these are like these hybrid synths they're not even synths anymore like this this feels almost more like they're trying to like just just cram way too much stuff in there they're missing the point again maybe I'm confused maybe there's this massive market for people who just want to you know show their mom how they can like make these cool sounds come out when they touch this you know or whatever I I don't know. Anyway, I'm a little bummed, honestly, by the update. Um, but that's, like I said, that's just as an update. I think in general, as a synth, as a whole, it's it's one of my favorites. So it, it, it's got so many cool sounds, and a lot of the presets are really great. They ha they put a lot of work into them, of course, and they're not cheap. So, okay, that's fine. They've made their ecosystem in a way where it's obviously really hard to pirate and stuff like that, which is great. You know, I, I support companies doing that, but just don't do it if it's a detriment to the user experience. You know what I mean? Like, or if you're gonna do it, just make sure that it's easy to update that stuff. Don't wanna go too deep down the rabbit hole of what my thoughts and emotions are on this, but that's basically the gist of it. I don't wanna say that it's a bad synth by any means. It's a great synth, it's, it's, it's one of my favorites, and maybe that's why you know I'm being extra critical on it. So I do still recommend anybody to get the synth. Just be aware that there's some kinks and issues in the installation process, and that you will have to you know, chalk up some change to get some of these uh, preset packs. That's about it, so hopefully you enjoyed this quick little sort of first impressions reaction, uh, and I'll see you on the flip side. Peace. How do you like this setup, by the way? Just trying something new here. I don't know. Learning about lighting and cinematography, bro. <laughs>